friend that even the Lithuanians we text and speak English and she was so confused. Yeah, yeah. She was no, like, why? We have, we have this weird thing, like, and I think it's a bit damaging our language in a way, you know? Mm. Our generation and even maybe a few generations before us, you know? But they had they had Russian influence. Yeah. We have a lot of English stuff. And it's I feel like it's a bit damaging, you know, yeah. the, the language. You borrow the lots of words from other languages as well. On the other hand, you could say it's like evolution mm. of the language in a way. I don't know. There's people who take care of the language anyway, you know. So yeah. <laughs> they're yeah. the language police. That's not my job now. Exactly. <laughs> and it's hard, man. Like if you work I remember when I used to work in like S E B Bank, which is international company obviously. It's just like daily communication. Like you cannot some some words or some terminology. It's much easier in English or make the English Lithuanian hybrid yeah. for that word, just so it's like easy to communicate. Because yeah. if you try to come up like with the word for like monitor, you know, with yeah, I mean, make what the hell? Like yeah. no one uses that. Yeah, it's very difficult. <coughs> the the, the language police as you say mm. uh, they made the new vocabulary of a modern lithuanian type of uh, it language mm. and it makes no sense it's unusable in everyday life no one's gonna use yeah, it use it just to make jokes at how yeah. ridiculous it is to try at the end of the day i think uh, their main job is to patrol the you know the like the media outlets yeah more than anything i mean yeah. you cannot control the general public how they speak so it's just like radio tv yeah. that's what they and can. language and naturally even like on youtube right podcasts they they cannot control no i know there's been attempts i think but i mean it's yeah. independent media they get anyway. taken down and then uh, people complain yeah. and uh, the uploader is not happy they move to rumble or mm. other or uh, vimeo or uh, other places yeah. and then there's no chance yeah. you're going to get anything. Man, I should address that the <coughs> set changed yes. from the last time you, you were on. Yeah, very um, nice. Yeah. Amazing upgrade, by the way. It's um, So I'm, I'm super grateful for um, uh, 16 co-working space, which is in Marsa. They, uh, they let me in. They let us in, you know, to use their space. And Amazing. it's so nice. Um, I'm very gonna, modern, I'm, very cool. Yeah, I'm gonna drop the the links to the website. Um, also, they gave me a discount code if you want to buy packages, or I'm not sure if it applies to like single day packages, but in general, there's mm. a code. So it's 16 in numbers. One six C W Charlie. What's what's the military for W? I don't know. So it's. Anyway, it's one six in numbers C W. That's the discount code. Um, Drop it down in the description. <laughs> yeah, and the discount, I think it's fifteen percent. They said. I'll double check, but it's all in description. So if you're interested, it's really cool place. It's very, I would say, central because it's in the middle of south and northern part of Malta. And it's right at one of the biggest junctions, basically. So, like, if you're going to either direction, you're crossing Marsa. In That's crossing. Anyway. That's what it's called, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's very. And close. you go Valletta, Floriana. Yeah, it's super close, um, and the the facilities are amazing. I think. So, yes. like, there's there's not much you would want more, really. I mean. If anyone's traveling, working remotely, it's, it's so much easier than all the other co-workings, you know, like in the central areas, like Zira Slima, like it's, Back it's, it's a nightmare to find parking. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's much busier here. You have, you just have more, more you space to breathe here, there, yeah. around the corner, everywhere over yeah. there as well. There's NPC parking, yeah. Valletta, Florian as well. Yeah, and they're gonna be expanding into another floor. Like they're gonna have the event space. So, I think it's it's really cool place. Yeah. and uh, it and it's gonna it's gonna grow. You should you should check it out for sure. Cool. So man, like the last time was that we, we left off. We I cut you off 
very rude. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, you but can shut up talking. <laughs> yeah, but man, like I was, uh, you know, we were um, recording from the apartment, like you know, um, wife, kid, etc. Yeah, blah. trying to save yeah. the marriage. And <laughs> no. shout out to Greta for Saved. bearing with him. Yeah. <laughs> shout out to 16 co working for saving my marriage. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, last time we, we actually stopped because you mentioned street photography. Um, and where you mentioned it was the how it led to offer from Chanel, the, the interview and then yeah. job offer. But um, you said obviously there's more to that. Yeah, because I, right. <coughs> sorry, the way it was, even though I didn't take that job, and then I continued my studies, applied to different jobs, and I got an engineering job that's more related to my studies mm. and my degree. Uh, that kind of photography thing as a hobby remained, you know, at a kind of like a back burner type of thing. Mm. So whenever I had like a stressful or busy day at work, I would grab a camera and I, on my way home, or I'll drop my shit at home, pack a camera and just go for a long walk till the sun goes down. You know, I just r uh, stroll around the London streets taking just random pictures, you mm. know. Chase the golden hour. Yeah, or the blue hour, or just yeah. to try to kind of, it, it all started like taking very cliche, very simple, very expected photos. It's like, oh, anyone can do that with a, with a phone, with a camera. And over time, I kind of started developing this kind of like, oh, I want to get better at this. This is fun. Mm. And uh, you start challenging yourself. And then I had a, fr a good friend who lived in London as well at that time. Now he's back to Lithuania. Uh, his name is Gintaras Gregaitis, so shout out to him. He's now working quite a bit in Lithuania as videographer and photographer as well. All right. And uh, for him, it kind of continued. but So he kind of got me on a more advanced level. He said, no, we go together, shoot. I was like, okay, yeah, let's do mm -hmm. this because, you know, I want to learn more. I want to see, you know, when you see someone doing something really well and he's very good with like... Uh, uh, portraits they don't expect, kind of like uh, very, you know, off the hip. Sometimes he sends holiday photos and you're like, oh, this is amazing. Like, I didn't even know you were taking photos, like that kind of thing. So I wanted to learn from that kind of mm -hmm. person who always shoots in that type of style. So I started challenging myself and that hobby kind of started taking over more and more. So, you know, like you buy one lens, you buy a better lens, you buy a tripod, then you start to go out at night mm. or like five or four in the morning, chase the fog in Canary Wharf in London to kind of do silly things mm. where your flatmates just look at you like, what the hell are you doing? Like, where are you going? Oh, I'm going to take this picture of a fog of like a bridge that disappears. And they're like, why? <laughs> <laughs> like what's the point it's like oh it's for me like it's not for it's not for anybody oh it's the dull people <laughs> that don't understand yeah. creative people yeah it's like but you, you challenge yourself yeah and it's silly as it as it sounds but, but you need yourself a challenge i know what you mean because you mentioned the buying gear and i know that game yeah like once you start upgrading and oh there, there's this new toy there's this yeah. new lens there's this you know oh now i can shoot sensor. up close oh my or god i can man. shoot from far away it's an addiction. <clears throat> like I, yeah. I, I have an addiction for that, and I'm sure there's a lot of people who have addictions. You know, just to upgrade. That's better. You know, newer, etc. Um, yeah, but so it's it's necessary in a way. I yeah. Think. So kind of, they, they always say, don't let the technology mm -hmm. or the gear dictate and drive your work. You know, yeah, if you're professional, yeah, you need good gear, whatever. Mm. But like for me, I just bought a simple Canon uh, 700D. So it's a crop sensor, uh, nothing amazing. It had a touch screen and a flip screen. So Wh I can make, you which know, is very like, useful. A, yeah, close up to water photos, that kind of stuff. <laughs> so, yeah, and whenever I go on a holiday, I would start taking pictures more and more and try to be more creative, incorporate people and uh, do landscapes, do moving objects, mm. that kind of thing. And uh, as I continued doing my day job, and uh, every evening I would edit photos, so very late at night, and uh, I started kind of like thinking, oh, you know, this is 
good hobby. I'll post things on Instagram. I don't get many views or likes or anything like that. Mm. But, you know, people message or they say, oh, I'm interested in buying a print of this or, or that. And then I kind of like just continue doing that for a few years. I think for three or four years, just as a background thing, as a hobby. And uh, at one point, I was uh, working in co-working space in London uh, as our company moved from private offices to co-working to be more flexible. Uh, they, there were a few companies from all around the world, like BP, uh, Airbus, few Japanese companies, 3D printing company, uh, and there was auditing company run by two uh, uh, nearly retiring uh, guys from Texas. Mm -hmm. I think they were from Fort Worth. And uh, they looked at my pictures and they bought one of my uh, pictures where I'm standing in front of Gherkin on the edge of a building yeah, on I a construction this. site. That's the one that you had on your desktop. No, I think so. And I, and, and I texted you and I mocked you like, oh, you have yourself on your, yeah, on your desktop yeah, yeah, yeah. wallpaper, you know? Yeah, Is yeah, that yeah. The one? I think that's the one. Because yeah, you have yeah. a few like where you're just yeah. standing from your back and there's so a, what like, I a do, landscape. It's called like landscape portrait mm. or landscape auto portrait because some, uh, I always travel alone or most of the time. So when you find a spot, if you, if you have a tripod, great. If you don't have a tripod, then you make what you have. Gorilla, you, gorilla pod. Yeah, gorilla pod. Yeah. So I usually yeah. travel with that. And then you just uh, establish a shot, stand, look at the view. And then you have a symmetric shot of your head, kind of like up to the shoulders in the frame, mm. you know, covering the two thirds, or at least up to the half of the frame. And uh, I started doing those. I don't know how many I've got of them, but that was one of that caught their attention. So me and my friend Ginteras, we trespassed into a building site in central London financial district. It was eight story building, I think. So we jumped over the fence, climbed the uh, staircases. You could take elevator. It was like, but that would be a bit too, because it's like midnight <laughs> and we're taking a fucking yeah. elevator. It's like high, it's high security. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the cameras everywhere, which is, I have to stress it, there are fucking cameras everywhere and nobody caught us. So mm. this is kind of, kind of silly. No one expects people no. like that. Yeah. <laughs> but no, but I think no, people in, do in, a lot in, in London. In, in London, in that area. it should be very popular, actually. Yeah, in that area, yeah, a lot of people go on rooftops. And uh, you have for, people for climbing scalpel building. Uh, that's just insane, by the way. Don't do that. What's, uh, what's scalpel building? It's uh, next to Lloyd's building, in front of Lloyd's building. And it's go slanted uh, like a half pyramid shaped uh, roof. Okay. And it's just glass. But you can, but the, where the angles meet, you go There's vents like a, for air and you can exit through there and sit on the edge and you can see a whole of London from there. I mean, you can see the whole of London from any of those buildings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. Know? So you don't have to risk your life to do yeah, that. Yeah, just go to the... Yeah, the, well, just go to as security. Can I go to like top floor with the lift? And most likely it'll be like, no, no, no. And then mm. after a few tries, it will let you just go. No, but, but the views are amazing. Uh, I don't remember the name of the place. I was uh, there's like a cool bar at Sky the Garden. That one, yeah. yeah. We, we went when I was in London. It was so nice at night, man. Like you can it's see, lights. you know the lights. It's it's yeah. uh, it's closest I've been to New York. <laughs> <let's say. laughs> yeah, you yeah. know, I imagine New York would be like twenty times. Yeah, it's insane. More, more, just lights everywhere. More of of light of everything, you know. But I mean, even in London, it was like wow. You know, yeah to be that i mean high. when you're there yeah try sky garden uh fan church yeah. garden just don't climb the fucking yeah roofs. so what we've done we literally climb and it was february it was cold as hell mm. no snow but it was freezing so if the moment you take your gloves off you can't feel your fingers so uh, we kind of like middle of the week uh, we thought the building site is not going to be busy. We mm. climbed up to the rooftop. My friend Ginter started picking, taking pictures of angles, trying to find his shot. And I, the moment I climbed, I, I see shard just up in front. And my plan was to, be, to climb a hotel and restaurant building on Liverpool Street. Mm -hmm. But I need to go through the security gate to, and then climb outside the building or go out into the churchyard, jump, 
and then go through a private staircase outside the building, like a fire mm-hmm. escape, mm-hmm. and then go over church rooftop to access the building for that shot. Mm-hmm. And we luckily climbed the building site uh, where they were getting out the building and establishing an office. And uh, I stood up, I saw a rail, a clean roof that was just about to be ready to be uh, set uh, with concrete. And we were just oh, this is perfect timing. You know, you, we have to, because we can't come back later. They're mm. definitely going to be covering everything. Yeah. So there was a rail and the gherkin, the 30 St. Mary X skyscraper, literally symmetrically in front of me. I'm like, okay, I, ha- I have to find a shot. So tried a few different angles, but then just put tripod very low to the ground, positioned quite high up, uh, and then went on that rail. It's like a one and a half, two inch wide uh, steel bar. So I stood on it, it's super freezing. I have a remote control to take picture of me. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's night, so you can't move. And there's very little light. Yeah, yeah. So you have to stand still for, longer for exposure. Uh, yeah, for long exposure mm-hmm. and make sure that something's <clears throat> in focus. Uh, either you will be in focus or the skyscraper and the city skyline will be in focus. And it's hard to focus <clears throat> when it's dark, you know, like you don't yeah. see it. Also, I don't have the Wi-Fi, like new phone, new cameras. You can just do everything on your phone and it will shoot it for you. So that was, that's my next thing. I want to, I want to upgrade just for that feature so I can continue doing these type of shots. Mm. But uh, yeah, it was freezing. I couldn't feel my arms. I couldn't feel my legs. I'm just, I, I'm, took out took off my winter jacket so I could stand just with a hoodie and it was anti-social social club hoodie so yeah I stood up on the edge you could see double-decker buses on the street passing by and they're tiny and you're like oh my god and I'm by the way I'm scared of heights <laughs> so this is not very smart yeah and same, uh, man, same. I don't like sta- standing heights. on the edge of a building yeah. and it, but that's like frozen bar slippery no just don't do it and uh, I got a shot in just a few tries. So, and uh, looked at me, I was kind of like blurry, but not too much. So you could uh, read the, uh, like a logo on the back of a, you could see, yeah, this is me. And, you, and the Gherkin building and all the surrounding buildings came in very sharp, like tack, tack sharp. Mm. I was so happy. So I went home, edited, I don't know, kind of th- sat on it for a few days. And then I posted online in different cropped versions and uh yeah and those, those guys they they bought it from yeah you. and uh, this old couple from texas they, they bought it like a print yeah they said oh, we like that picture you know would you like to could could you make a print you know tell mm. us the price just name the price and uh you know, we'll buy it so i was reasonable mm. you know i said okay the print is gonna cost you know 100 or 200 and then you know i need to uh, I don't know, just for a like creative type of thing, hmm. how much I could charge, you know, so added, I don't know, 100 or 200 uh, pounds on top of that. For and the risk. <laughs> yeah, for the risk I took. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they, <laughs> they bought it and they hang, hung it on the, in their office. So every morning I come from the, to the top floor, I go check into co-working space and as I walk by, in the co-working space. I go past their office and I could see my picture hanging on a wall <laughs> every day. That was very go, good. That's theater. the guy. Yes, that's the guy. <laughs> that's the guy. <laughs> <laughs> and the financial company, like I, what are they trying to say about with this picture? Like guy standing on the edge in front of a financial district in London. Oh, you could you could it, come up with yeah, metaphors. Yeah, many metaphors from that, for it, yeah. Know? Yeah, I mean so but yeah, it's a well, cool picture. I saw it and you like you said you have a few of them. And like off the top of my head, you could do like, I don't know, a reel, you know. I want to do like serious. Ch- 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 like yeah. So d- ideas. Different shots, but same framing, like different locations. I mean, it's it's almost like because I was following you for a long time on Instagram and I saw your photography. And to me, it almost became like your signature uh, framing kind of thing, you know, because you, you kept doing yeah, pictures yeah. like that in different locations. And I... I really liked it. I mean, it, it looks really, really good, man. Yeah. So the plan is to kind of like continue doing that sort of thing. Mm. Uh, I just need to upgrade my gear right now because yeah. I need a new camera. Because na- now mm-hmm. you only shoot with the phone. Now just no? phone. And I haven't posted anything on Instagram for two years. Mm-hmm. I have around 10,000 pictures, if not more, pending on my laptop. 
just waiting. Nothing like stuff that's not many there. of them edited, like hundreds of them edited. I just need to dump them. I just oh, need to sit man. down and just start because I post on my stories. And people see them, oh, this is cool, you know, Morocco, New York, you know, mm. uh, Istanbul, other places. And I was like, mm. oh, you should post this. You know, oh, you could sell this online, you mm. know that. Like, or just take it on, uh, uh, on Splash, you know, just post everything yeah, there yeah. and you might you know, start making money instead of just keeping Uns- them. Uns- Unsplash, that's like uh, stock photography? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's uh, free. But mm-hmm. obviously, if companies use it for like apps or uh, some services or public... Uh, kind of domain things they they buy the license they have to buy mm. it okay. kind of kind of kind of deal so so this guy that you were shooting with gintaras what what did you learn from him like because you said he's uh he was mostly into like portraits yeah but there's <clears throat> there was obviously stuff yeah that landscapes you took from him. Uh, and uh shooting in the street we we started looking a lot into videos posted by adorama online because they do uh, covers of very famous ins- Instagrammers or mm-hmm. people who are not as known but have a really keen eye for things. So we kind of started experimenting with kind of urban photography and then moved on to look into classic sh- shooters like uh, what would be like uh, Golden, for example. He's a magnum photographer and mm-hmm. uh, Ernst Haas. Uh, many kind of famous street photographers from back in the day and some of them still shoot now mm. who kind of like in your face you know new york style just crazy you know very busy frames and so we started every day going to london go to chinatown leicester square you know all around these busy areas shoreditch mm. as well and try to kind of get that shot of uh, what encompasses the street photography. One, one, one thing that pops into my head, uh, you know, in street photography, a lot of times, like once you get a bit, uh, you know, uh, like used to shooting in the street, you obviously start uh, shooting with people. Right? Yeah. Just random people. Was there any fear at any time? You know, like, because you're shooting yeah. a person, maybe he doesn't want to be in the yeah. picture. Maybe he's going to approach you aggressively and say, like, why are you taking pictures of yeah, me? Yeah, delete this or you whatnot. You know, like, was was that a learning curve for you? Like, Yeah, so the way it started, uh, once I moved to Shoreditch in 2017, the, the area has been changing quite a bit. Mm-hmm. So the, the, the surrounding Spitalfield area remained the same, but we could see lots of construction happening in the city, city of London, the financial district. And that's where we went on rooftops and did all this uh, uh, photography. And then I was thinking one day, I could incorporate all of that as a background, but try to kind of frame people. And I remember I was just walking to a, a shop, I think, or to a pub. And had it happened to have a camera and it was evening a uh, very hot summer day and sun was going down and you could and there is a subway used to be subway uh, uh, like a restaurant like a subway uh, fast food chain uh-huh, uh-huh. and uh, there was this lady walking uh, with the baby and the guy waiting to pick up a delivery from subway so he was speaking from the door looking uh, into the street and it was empty no cars perfect weather and the sun's going down you could see through the gap in the buildings there is construction in the city happening mm-hmm. and we are in this shortage neighborhood which is just messy old buildings and you could see the the old shortage and the new and then you know just a few people kind of like going around their day mm-hmm. so i was just going past i'm like oh shit just set up boom, one snap one photo and boom i love it so I'll send it over. You can probably show it. So yeah, that's yeah. how it started. It's like incorporating people into the street, hmm. but kind of trying to make it a, more of a landscape thing. You can see on Instagram a lot these days. You can hmm. see, you know, like a, a street, a lonely person passing by. So yeah. to kind of give it a scale, a more of a dramatic feel hmm. to, to the whole you know, kind of city vibe. Either, you know, you're uh, alone in a, in a big city or you lonely in a city of millions you know so kind yeah, of like a, create yeah, that yeah. feeling of you know what it feels to live in a big but, city but, but there were never <clears throat> like 
encounters where someone approached you like oh, i had a few don't, times don't take security people approaching me saying like you can't shoot entrances for example in financial district in canary wharf uh, you can't shoot entrances of buildings just for safety just reasons. safety reasons yeah mm-hmm. i said you know i know you know don't mean any harm but it's in case it ends up in internet someone might have ideas about how the entrances work and mm-hmm. just for mm-hmm. terrorists and threats and uh, that kind of thing okay okay so but yeah i had like but from people i think usually when you shoot in the street they kind of smile or they i don't know like i haven't had bad encounters but i know people around me who had always said like yeah like i was shouted at mm-hmm. someone like tried to spill on me and like I never had bad encounter. Like I don't know. Maybe I come across as non-invasive in a way, even though I might shoot with mm. the DSLR, which is pretty big. Yeah, it's, not, it's not like point and shoot. It's not point and shoot. It's mm. quite in your face. Yeah. So I did quite a lot of of those, like just right in front of people. Maybe you just have like ninja moves. I don't know. Just you know, no one. But it's no loud as well. You. DSLR is like ching ching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's why you should upgrade to mirrorless because you can have silent shooting. Like, yeah, yeah. No sound. I shot with a seven three, the seventy two megapixel Sony. Uh, that thing is a mm. monster. If you want to crop in. Oh my Man. God, Jesus Christ! Yeah. I remember when shooting street. Mm-hmm. And just the first moment, I just put an auto because mirrorless menu is a nightmare. So I was like, I had 85 millimeter, uh, mm-hmm. Sigma, Al- uh, Sigma uh, the Alpha series or whatever, the, the yeah, premium. Yeah, G Master, probably. No, no, no Sig- uh, Sigma Sig- is yeah, uh, yeah. like the black series, whatever yeah, it's called. But I think 85 is like 1.4, F1.4, F1. which 1. is super 4. shallow. And then uh, 50 mil. To, you know 2.1 kilo weight uh f f 1.4 i think as well yeah, yeah. Uh, fixed and i went shooting with them l- lenses mm-hmm. like total package like five grand with primes but i mean yeah to, to change it yeah that, need that's to, a bit of a hustle yeah yeah a hustle, but i just yeah. tried like okay let's do 50 mil and then do 85 mil and the moment i press the button you got yeah. 100 snaps each 72 megapixels weighting 100 meg and the, the amount of information sa- saved over there. Yeah. So yeah, that's my idea yeah. now. I want to upgrade not to Sony, but I want to upgrade to Canon, because you can you can beat Canon. You can throw in the water, and it's gonna be alive. That's what yeah, I yeah. do. And Canon, I mean, ar- lo- arguably has the best autofocus, which is in in street photography is very yeah, useful. Yeah, you need it fast. So with with Sony, it's good because it hunts a lot, mm-hmm. uh, and then you can get lots of refocus. Uh, options so when you open uh, if you shoot blind you open and you can s- if you haven't established a shot just kind of like spray and pray type of thing mm. you can you can find a shot that works yeah but we can we can like um, you kind of establish a shot and this is your photo you know? I, I think latest both sony and canon if i'm not mistaken has this uh feature called post focus where you if like you LG miss a f- cameras if, if you it. miss a focus but it it's not by a big margin yeah just but if a it's a bit. bit off in the post with their software you can adjust where it focused because all right it takes like multiple focus points in each picture basically all right and saves that information yeah yeah i think <coughs> I, iphones probably have that i think no lg lg, LG had it yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. but I and mean, they had in their cameras as it's, well it's very useful i i believe it's a big file size because it's basically like 20 pictures compressed into one, you know, yeah. all the information on different focus points, etc. But I mean, it, it, it can save your ass a lot of times. Yeah. And I feel like not even for street photography, like for a wedding, for for example, yeah. photographers, like if you miss the first kiss and you it's just shot. out of focus <laughs> and you can focus it in post, that's like a lifesaver, you know? Yeah, you, yeah, you cannot yeah. redo that shot, obviously but yeah. yeah man um i need to yeah once i upgrade i'll yeah. be more brave to go back <laughs> into the street and just and shoot again because i really miss it like I, now i yeah. haven't done any photography for months and i feel like london i mean i asked <clears throat> you about those those um situations where someone you know approaches you like don't take pictures but like london is like the the last place you would expect probably something like that just because people are so used to everything happening uh, happening on the street yeah, right in front of them like, like in, in lithuania in our hometown there's much bigger chance someone's yeah, gonna yeah. be like why are you taking pictures yeah of me, just you know? walking around with the camera in your hand is like what are you doing yeah or like, you get robbed 
Yeah. You know? People ask, start asking questions. Like, are you, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, are you a photographer? Oh, how cute. Mm, yeah. <laughs> show me your camera. <laughs> yeah, 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 show me your camera. Yeah. yeah. But like I shot in New York, for example, and uh, now had a problem. Day or night, uh, walking around like neighbors like Brooklyn or downtown Manhattan, meatpacking district, there was no issue whatsoever. So, you know, it kind of depends, I think, how you carry yourself. Mm -hmm. And you just look like, you don't look harmful. You look like a kind of tourist, just taking a snap. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, hunting. Like other people would just, I've seen other street shooters uh, during the meetups, how they approach. And uh, I wouldn't want to be photographed by them. Like, because mm -hmm. they stand and like, they look intense and it's the, this is, they look like they're going to fucking eat you. Like, mm. like, what are you doing? Just relax. Enjoy the process, yeah, yeah. you know? It's, it's a hobby. Yeah. Jesus. Like, you, you, it's good when you have an image and a vision. Because now when I do shoot, I already have an idea. I go to the spot. I set up. I establish. Boom. Mm. And then if something happens along the way or on the way back, I kind of like just go with the flow. And sometimes you get inspiration and just, okay, let's go for a walk. Let's mm. take a detour. And uh, that's what I used to do in London all the time. And I saw some people just kind of like, oh, now we're going to do street photography. And they're going like bang, 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 bang. And that's when you start to get into arguments with other people because you kind of invade the space. Yeah. And you carry yourself in a certain way that's kind of like harm. Looks like you can't... Uh, Seems like you mean men harm, you mm. know, but I never had that issue pro pro probably because I didn't take it seriously mm. enough to kind of carry myself in that way. So I yeah, was just yeah. enjoying the moment. And obviously there's, there's probably areas where you wouldn't go in London to shoot, right? I mean, not necessarily probably because... I would they're, avoid they're, uh, Brixton maybe at yeah. night. Not because it could be dangerous, but because lots of drunk people and you could get in arguments mm. and, you know, nobody might mean any harm. But it's just accidents, you know, happen. Like Shoreditch, I shot at night uh, where a lot of people come, you know, from outside London to party and never had a problem ever, mm. you know. And people sometimes pose, you know, they like it. Like they're kind of drunk, like, oh, pictures. <laughs> they think that you're like a club photographer. <laughs> yeah, or something. something. Or if they're in the street, you know, they just, they don't mind mm. it, you know. So kind of like the environment for street photography, I think, is, is not that bad. You just mm. have to kind of carry yourself in a nice way and be respectable of others. If someone asks you, like, to kind of delete a picture, okay, you know, you can do that. Yeah. Like, again, like shooting uh, from rooftops. Uh, me and Gintaras, again, went on another rooftop of office building. We can see financial district and all gate east, skyscrapers and offices, and you can see all the other people on the rooftop bars, kind of mm. like being all fancy. And we you had a few pints in a pub and we're like, looking at this building like just kind of scouting and you're like we've been at <laughs> night once that's 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 the time when you get those ideas oh we should climb like after yeah. a few beers we should climb we the went roof. there at night <laughs> but that was like a year ago and uh now they did the refurbishment so the security is higher the the place where you can access the fire escape has been uh, increased by a few meters mm -hmm. so now it's not a simple climb and pull your friend now it's climb 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 and like how the hell I help my friend is it's very difficult and you go barbed wire everywhere but anyway you kind of we said we have to shoot the sunset because sunset in May that was May uh, starts to go down be literally just behind the financial district if you look from the Thames River mm -hmm. towards the west uh, we're kind of thinking okay let's do it so we looked at the cameras we kind of gauge the situation we waited a little mm -hmm. bit, see if security comes out or something. And then we just made our move. We jumped. And you can see people from rooftop of a pub just kind of looking like, what the hell are they doing? <laughs> so we, because it's still daylight, mm. but the sun started going, it started setting. So we went around the fire escape. We saw people like uh, one security guard inside the building, uh, just walking, making rounds. You kind of go behind the glass oh hiding yeah and then you climb and the gate to access the rooftop was were locked obviously so mm -hmm. we're like okay we need to climb outside so you're around i think it's eight story building as well so you have to go outside the fire escape so you kind of climb outside holding 
and you got barbed wire everywhere, so you hanging above eight stories down of nothing. I feel dizzy already, man. So and then you kind of like go around and you climb on the rooftop. <laughs> And Jesus. then we just, you come across and it was, it was just recently refurbished. So everything on the rooftop changed after our last visit the year before. So it was more easy to set up a shot. You could sit down on the edge of a rooftop in, mm. in a safe way because they have catches uh, mm. on the side. So it was like, this is very nice. So we had enjoying private sunset on a building whilst all the other people in like rooftop bars and you know, taking pictures in a crowded uh, balcony and we're like just sitting there like, Hmm. look at this we go we go a sky for ourselves and so we took f some shots uh took a portrait from my back i think interest uh, took that shot of me uh, and it's a nice shot now i want to go return there because all the skyscrapers now finish building in that area and mm -hmm. then now the sky is totally different and yeah. it would look much more uh, amazing but maybe, so, maybe this time just ask for the access just show them the the last yeah. picture and so say what like happened, i was already there so what Listen, happened just let me in. we saw police pull up and i'm like oh my god someone called police. they i'm like 100 percent there for us because hmm. this is met police this is their neighborhood their area and they do patrol a lot they walk around and you know it's not unusual so i said you know don't worry hmm. no maybe it's not for us and then they drove away and then they pull up again they made around around the neighborhood and pull up again. I was like, yeah, they probably spotted us. Hmm. But someone probably called. Of course, because they're so, not looking up when they're <laughs> driving, you know? Like, yeah, you yeah, yeah. See from someone. the street, it, it would be difficult to see someone mm. over there. So someone from other building or security called in. So we're shooting and we're hearing like, you, now stop, calm the fuck down. And some lady is shouting at us. And we turn around, it's a police officer. Uh, one guy and one lady, police, uh, poli metropolitan police uh, uh, constable. So we're thinking like, ah, oh, fuck, now we're in trouble. <laughs> so we turn around and say, yeah, yeah, don't worry. We just turn off the camera, pack, and you know, we come across. Swallow the SD card. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I didn't do anything. I was thinking like, oh, fuck, they're going to tell us to delete the fucking pictures. Yeah. The, the, all you worry about, like, not that you're going to get like a fine or something. You or worry about the pictures. <laughs> it's like, like, fuck jail, the pictures. <laughs> and Gentaras, um, I think at the time, was already married, I think, and had a baby. Mm hmm. So he has completely different worries. Me, I just worry about the images and going to work next next week because it was Friday mm. evening. And uh, yeah, we, we, the police officers opened the gate. So they said, how did the hell, how the hell, what, first, first of all, what the fuck are you doing on the rooftop? <laughs> so we're just taking pictures. It's a nice sunset. And they just looked at us like they were, they looked like very, kind of like angry and uh off like we look we were scared like mm. they serious officers and then they just start laughing <laughs> so they were really nice to and us. they let you go yeah, yeah. so we, we went down through the fire exit security guard opened the office and it was newly refurbished very nice and we went staircase down uh, into the lobby of that building and it was just the whole building was empty just security guard sitting in there and, and i don't think he is the one that called i don't remember how this because we had a chat mm. and uh, he said that he didn't it, we were caught on camera but he didn't spot it us or something so probably someone from other office building called or you know or we set up an mm. alarm or something because they thought oh if they're on that building next time they're gonna come to our building or you something know? like yeah yeah so yeah and call. so what happened they said okay <clears throat> we need to take your we need your information so we gave our ids they took our down our information took our portraits like mug shots and the police officer was like oh you, you're a photographer so where is the better light the, <laughs> for your mug shot and i was like well we should stand over here it's like, okay, am I doing this right? <laughs> so I'm coordinating him while he's taking my mugshot. And then he showed me, I was like, yeah, this is a good picture. <laughs> so, yeah. And then the lady officer, she was like, like, what, what was the intention? I was like, oh, you know, we want to take a landscape photo of the, of, uh, of the financial district. You know, nothing private, nothing up close, just, uh, just the overall image of a sunset. Mm. And she said, do you know what you've done? I said, yeah, we, tres we did trespassing, but it's not, I know it's illegal, 
but it's nothing you can do really to us because we didn't damage property while trespassing. Mm. And they looked at each other, the police officers are like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I was so like, I knew it. I knew go. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they said, we'll just file, file you a, a notice mm. uh, that lasts two years, obviously, and then it expires and then it goes from your profile. And that notice what like prevents you from trespassing yeah, if you, if, again somewhere? You no, know, if you happen to get caught again, that's a second notice and i think third notice you'll get no second notice you get a fine and uh third notice you might get like a day in a in a jail local metropolitan police or something yeah yeah oh, okay yeah so yeah we did get that and then she said can i see the pictures i was like okay and i showed her it was like yeah the pretty nice you like you ha I, I, she asked me if i'm happy i was like i'm pretty chuffed like i can't wait to go home and edit them and um, she just went through all of them. It's like, yeah, they're pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> so she's like, okay. She just had to check if, yeah, if yeah, you actually yeah. didn't take any like detailed yeah, yeah. shots of stuff. Yeah. Okay. So I was like, you know, she's like, all right, yeah, you can keep them. So, so we turned off the camera and we yeah. went to the pub. <laughs> <laughs> so we went, we went inside the building, on top of the building, through outside uh, of the building, climbing, and we left the building with police officers right through inside. the main entrance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And the police officer said, make sure I don't see you anymore around here, okay? I was like, dude, I live around the corner. Mm -hmm. And it was like, yeah, I know, I work here. So, so make sure I don't see you. I was like, this is fucking impossible, man. <laughs> <laughs> so it's they like just. Now you have to be hiding from particular yeah, police officers. Like, I'm on, I'm, my pub is on Main Road, and I see you guys every day. So <laughs> you're going to catch yeah, me yeah. again. But I said, no, no, just, you know, stay away from trouble and enjoy bank holiday. But you obviously was... trespassed again after, no? I think I did. Yeah, but, but we never maybe got not caught. in the neighborhood. No, 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 no neighborhood, but we never got caught again. So, yeah, since then, uh, it already expired. That was a few years ago. Good, so, so now you can go back on the road. Yeah, 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 <laughs> I want to go back. Yeah, so when I fly back to London, I don't know, next month or in, in, in May, yeah, I want to make a shot. Yeah. but i don't know how that's gonna go <laughs> yeah so but yeah, it's, but, yeah. but it's super cool i mean it's it's an experience um as long as it didn't end up in jail you no know? it's no. an experience yeah i was lucky like metropolitan police officers have a bad rep english officers have in england right now like i never had any issues or any of my friends doing photography mm. you know i remember we were smoking weed in front of westminster and drinking beer in the middle of the day which is absolutely stupid thing to do because <laughs> it's the most secured area in london because mm. you got police officers on bikes riding horses walking around all the time yeah, yeah and the guy and the police officer were just passing by and they looked at us and said having a good day He's like yeah yeah so just make sure you collect your cans of beer after mm. you finish. I said, yeah, no worries. And so no, like, have a good day. No one pays attention to, <laughs> Nobody we cares. to, to, to weed anymore, yeah. right? In, in London, I mean, <clears throat> yeah, too no, much no police officer will come to you and say, like, give me yeah, the weed. Yeah, too much paperwork. You know? So when we got caught with the cameras later, we're like, okay, the biggest trouble is getting a ticket or a fine. And just because we're trespassing, you know, if they find some damage, then yeah, we have to pay for the damage. Mm. And then you might get, you know, something, some, uh, something more serious might happen. Yeah. Okay. So that, yeah. that's one of the adventures, obviously from street photography, but, uh, you mentioned that that led somehow to Amazon, right? That, yeah. Th so th that's, that's a bit, yeah, yeah 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 so as i started taking it more seriously even though it's still a hobby uh uh one of my colleagues Chaz, she left our company the brave form company i was working for as a design engineer and she went to work on a like a startup type of thing mm -hmm. and as a designer she's a graphic designer and packaging designer and uh one day she messaged me and said this company i'm working for they're looking for a photographer mm -hmm. so do you do any studio photography or can you send some examples of your work so i just gave them instagram and uh, there was nothing related to the area because i have no uh, prior professional experience with the studio i've shot before you mm -hmm. know with strobes flashes setups 
but not on a kind of like a scale where you have to do many shoots a day and you change products or items or people or props because mm -hmm. it's very fast moving type of thing and you have to be very selective and yeah i was like yo no experience and uh they said okay just write up a cv make a quick portfolio and just send over and i was like okay what's the worst can happen you know i'm bored of my work in the office so i was like fuck it just just you know what, what, what were you doing at the time I was product design yeah. engineering yeah. Okay, okay so just after university uh -huh. i was already there for four years i think going on five mm -hmm. so 2019 was about to kick off and uh, yes, I was, I was kind of like keen to start looking for other career paths and something related or completely offshore to do. But anyway, mm. so, so I'm going to take this opportunity and uh, uh, going to do my best to, to, to get it. Mm. And uh, I sent the work and then I got invited for interview next week, like just instantly. They said, yeah, we like you. We want to talk with you. We want to talk money with you. You know, I was like, shit. <laughs> Straight away. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So I was like, okay. So I went to the to work that day. I excused myself. Then I went uh, on a Uber drive to the office of those uh, of the company that was working with Amazon. It's like a startup, so they supply Amazon, like a FBA type of business, mm -hmm. fulfilled by Amazon type of stuff. And it was kind of like picking up, gaining a lot of momentum for them. So they were hiring uh, quite a few new people. And it's a Jewish run company. So they usually just hire family and friends to kind of help the community. Mm. And they donate lots of money they make back to the community. But they started looking to people from outside to bring in some talent. And the packaging was one of them. So that's what my friend Chaz was uh, working on. And uh, I was invited to do photography and establish a studio. There was nothing. They didn't have no photography. Mm. Photography was with the phone, the phone. snap. Mm post edit really quickly on photoshop or something and just post and mm -hmm. the quality wasn't the quality of pictures weren't show wasn't making justice to the quality of products that were starting to upgrade and push in mm -hmm. uh on online so they needed a new a, a studio photographer so i went there uh, had a really good chat uh, cool guys very young like talking 23 to 25 years old running like million pound world business okay you know and they're making like million a mm. month it's crazy and it's, it's weird like i remember the first <clears> time when you told me about this i was thinking like it's so niche in the way you know but a lot like, of people you, you, do that yeah i know but i mean if you didn't come across it in some way like you wouldn't think of something like that unless yeah. you're very into like e-commerce you know yeah Amazon, drop shipping all that bullshit but then. you would never think there's a company that you know, focuses on like fulfillment through Amazon, you know, just that, sh yeah, sh yeah, yeah. the products, etc. you know, it's, yeah. and, and that, that you can actually make so much money do yeah, doing yeah, that, yeah. right? So that kind of opened my eyes mm. and I was like, what kind of things do you sell? And they started explaining all the business plan, the brands, the companies, and there's just extensive range of variety of products. So you can't always shoot, even if you know your studio setups, you can't spend hours creating a lighting and shot you need mm. to be like bang 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 send to the editor you know you do your quick edits make sure the colors are correct and everything because sometimes you shoot neon colors or you know other type of stuff mm. so i was like oh my god this is going to be crazy difficult mm. and they asked me like how long it would take for you to make a shopping list for a studio mm -hmm. and uh kind of like what would you need you know can you tell us because they say i have no idea i'm green you know, pitch it to me. Mm. So I just sat down and uh, I knew quite a lot about what, what I need. So I just tell them you need, you know, two strobes, you need uh, 600 watt strobes there. You need to have uh, a laptop dedicated to receive uh, tethered images. Then you probably would need someone to retouch it for, for, a, for a background mm. and then etc. all these type of things. And then he said, okay, so we'll ask you to kind of like create over the next week or so uh, some images at home you know of uh, some random items mm. and then send them to us in a few different ways like a white background color background setup effect action shot you know that kind of stuff mm -hmm. product placement so i did that in my room 
over a weekend. Mm -hmm. It was very stressful. Like nothing was working fine. I couldn't <laughs> get the light yeah. right because I don't have the proper setup. So I use a lot of my computer magic and just patience and trying and trying, doing and doing just as like, all right, KG, don't fuck it up. Get this right. You might get a job as a photographer. Mm. So you could be the guy at parties who says, you know, what do you do for a living? I'm a photographer. <laughs> And people are like, go yeah. fuck yourself. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to most people, it doesn't sound like a hard it's not job, a job. You know? It's not a job. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if it's a hobby, if you like doing it, then people say it's not a job. But yeah. the problem with hobby becoming your job, it's not a hobby anymore. It's no fun anymore. Mm. And you kind of lose the fun part. Yeah. That's, so that's true, yeah. When I received that task to do, I was set up against a girl from ASOS who shoots uh, stuff for ASOS, so she's she's pro. And then she was, but she was before ASOS, I think she was doing some other, oh, I don't remember, it's like a big e-commerce site photographer. And when I found out that she's my contestant, I was like, no fucking way I can Co win Co this. Cozy maybe? There's a, there's a big brand. No, it was, uh, it was literally where I work. Mm. She had office next to me, oh, okay. not far from me. So when they told the name, mm. they're like they're like a publishing company, you know, like Vogue. They do shoots for them, uh, mm. for the magazines. And uh, they were up and coming at the time, the e-commerce site. Mm. And then she jumped into make photography for them. So she knew studio shooting already. Oh, yeah. So she had like a... <clears throat> She had a few years she under she her belt as well. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. yeah, and she knew how to do all of that kind of, uh, you know, studio magic. Mm. So I was like, all right, you need to try it. You know, if I don't get it, I don't get it. But you know, at least I tried, and I was, you know, fighting with the best. <laughs> Let's yeah. just say. And uh, yeah, I sent the files, and then they came back to me in a few days, and they said, yeah, we want you. You know. Mm. Yeah, we can talk money, tell us how much you want. We'll try to match your number and, uh, you know, we'll take it from there. And you start ASAP. Mm. No, fuck. If you can't start tomorrow, you start tomorrow. Mm. So I couldn't. I said, I need to finish, obviously, my work because I have a one-month commitment of, uh, you know, you need mm. to tell the work that, you know, I'm yeah, quitting. Yeah, yeah, Like notice period. Yeah. yeah. So they said, yeah, I think we can work with that because we're moving to new offices soon. So that's perfect, you know. Mm. So yeah, I gave a notice. Everyone was very surprised. People thought I'm joking because it was first of April when I said that. Mm, yeah, good timing, man. Yeah, yeah. So I <laughs> sent a notice to my boss because uh, that day I was working from home and he's working from home as well. And it was like, "Hey, KJ, I received this email. So is it this uh, like a real, real, true?" type of thing or uh is this april 1st joke i was like oh sorry mike i completely forgot it's april fools today so no it's it's true yeah and happy april fools but it's true <laughs> so yeah. it's like, oh sorry mm. to hear like you said uh, you know hopefully it's it's a good thing you know yeah, you yeah, yeah. so yeah it's related to photography I was like, all right i said it's super so you know no hard feelings obviously my boss tried to chase me that's a, that's actually a rare reaction no, get, everyone was you know? kind of like supportive and kind of mm. happy and said, yeah. I mean, it's when you think about it, it's a normal thing. People move on. But, yeah. uh, but obviously a, it's a lot a of times when you quit, <coughs> you get this like, yeah, oh, but, like but, so now but you leave not us going, in shit. Yeah, but I'm know? not going to competitors or anything. Mm. Uh, obviously, our design team shrunk from like four or five people to just two. And now it's going to be one. Mm. And it's super stressful. That's it's an issue too much for work. that person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm now in that position because... Uh, Oh yeah. As the story yeah. goes, uh, you know, I'll come back. But yeah, so I I quit, uh, and uh, yeah, had a nice leaving due party, all that kind of jazz. And uh, I think because I'm not going to competitors, it's completely unrelated business. Everyone mm. was kind of like, oh yeah, you know, do it. Mm. So yeah, I started doing photography. Uh, I it took me a month to get all the gear and set up for the studio. Then we moved from London to outside Hemel Hempstead, uh, where the new Amazon warehouse was built and there were new fulfillment warehouses. So they uh, kind of leased a new 15 or 30,000 square feet warehouse. It's massive, just empty. So they had this set up offices, everything uh, kind of like built from scratch. 
and they did the racking for uh, for pallets. Mm. Uh, no, they bought everything they need. They spent I don't know quarter of a million pounds just in a month just to so establish. It's a massive operation, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. They don't mess about these guys. The young kids, they're mm. like younger than us, like they, my sister's age. And they don't fuck around, <laughs> you know, they serious about business. Yeah. And uh, they take seriously, you know, all the Jewish traditions, which is cool. So like on Fridays when you work, if it's Shabbat, uh, or they say Shabbos, you have to finish at least an hour before sunset so you can go home before the sun goes down. And in winter, that means you finish work at one or two o'clock. <laughs> so not bad. <laughs> yeah, not bad. Not good, right? When I have deadlines and yeah. have to, we have to continue the same work pace or mm. the same deliverables. But that's above deadlines for them, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so that's uh, that was nice exposure to the, the different culture, and I really enjoyed working there. Mm. That's stressful times, but yeah, it was good. And uh, yeah, that's where I learned to work, kind of like. Um, set up different screens, lighting, uh, set up a system of doing it. Cause in the first few months I was doing it by myself and it was getting crazy. Like, mm. uh, w one winter m uh, month was cold. Summer came was crazy hot working in a warehouse. Cause mm. you know, you can run AC as much as you want. Yeah. It's thousand square it's feet. Massive, yeah. It's everyone sweating when the you know, gate is open because containers are coming in for mm. the products. So it was just, uh, I was just exposed to lots of action going on. I'm like, okay, how the hell this thing works? Mm. So, so you didn't have like an enclosed office I doubt, space? No, when we moved outside London into the new warehouse, no, we didn't have. And the, the project was obviously to set it up. We had planners coming in, taking measurements, asking me questions. What do I need? Insulation, you know, mm -hmm. height of the ceilings. You've had people from uh, HSBC Bank coming in as potential uh, investors and just looking what the investment is doing because mm. obviously you know most of money is is, is uh, loaned from the from banks. The bank, yeah, That's yeah. how you do the business as a limited liability company. Ideally, never set your own money into the business. Always borrow uh, on the company. So I learned kind of these different things and. Uh, uh, go experience to hire people. So two people that I hired uh, <clears throat> for my team was a retoucher, uh, Hannah. She was straight from school mm -hmm. and uh, didn't have any like a uh, prior extensive experience in uh, Photoshopping or Illustrate, all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, Paul, uh, my studio assistant uh, that I hired as well was uh, also just from school, just fresh of the boat, green, you know, but very keen, very want to learn mm -hmm. and it very picks up things very quickly. And they were very young uh, and uh, I, I thought I could mold them, you know. Yeah. But that's always a risk a bit, you know. Yeah, With the yeah. young people, they might you know, just change their mind next day. Yeah, exactly, you know? exactly. And you get, you know, different priorities, obviously. I'm getting older. Uh, mm. I have my shit kind of straight. <laughs> and they, you know, oh, Friday night out yeah. or whatever. Oh, yesterday we smoked so much weed. Yeah. Today I couldn't wake up. I was like, sorry for being late. Like, that kind of excuses, yeah, you know. Like, yeah. So kind of like, but I was very, you know, easy with them i think i wasn't too harsh of a boss for them but I, I taught them quite a lot they taught me you know how to be a better a team leader you know don't take all the responsibility yourself you have to know how to delegate yeah and yeah, that that's it makes things easier for everyone if mistakes happen you know don't be angry you know mistakes happen mm. all the time so we kind of like created a system where you know uh, my assistant would <clears throat> uh, create a system to keep track of what we need to shoot mm -hmm. that's connected to online uh, list of uh, projects that are required to mm -hmm. go on amazon ebay and other yeah. uh, uh, websites for e-commerce and uh, i would open it in the morning i see what's on the list we prioritize mm -hmm. we highlight what we need to shoot today definitely what's uh, on a back burner what's not important and then we would scan with the scanner it comes up on my screen mm -hmm. uh, we go to the box where the samples are dropped from container every time container comes in we have a storage with the different numbers and barcodes on each box and then someone just drops scans and says this sample is in this box and appears on my system and i know it's on my list to, to shoot mm. so it's like very kind of like automated it was in the beginning it took a few months together but it started working we started getting like 
quick yeah, yeah. shoot but instead the, the of the sounds very advanced like how how did you know what systems to use for like scanning etc or or the oh, company no, was use, already using they that? were already using uh, for uh, to keep track of their stock it's oh, like okay. an auditing system uh -huh. they use in warehouses yeah, yeah. everywhere you just you use this like a walkie-talkie type of thing you can see people in shops using that you know when mm. you go shopping yeah, yeah, to know, keep stock mm -hmm. so yeah we use that to keep uh, track of what we need, we need to do so my system would uh, grab uh, the thingy sets up you know few main shots that we need to do we need to have a main white background shot with perfect white where you can see most of the product then you have a detail shots a few shots then uh, something you know with action if it's interactive thing you know mm. someone holding as well or playing with it so you can see the scale of item yeah, yeah. and uh, it ranged from you know very tiny toys <laughs> stickers or something that you can't even know how to, or don't know how to shoot like things that are transparent mm -hmm. but they light in the, in the dark like how the hell fuck i shoot a transparent <laughs> thing yeah. on a white background <laughs> so yeah, you kind of have to learn these things or like mirrors sh shooting mirrors yeah yeah so you kind of learn these different tricks like shooting on a tripod above a ceiling or you know in front of a white thing at mm -hmm. an angle so you're not in the shot like you learn these different things yeah and to kind of like start getting down the process really well and then i remember uh yeah so i would shoot the thing appears on the screen uh, paul my assistant would run some of the presets that we already have for that lighting setup so you don't have to edit photos if it's a uh, something like very neon green or pink purple magenta cyan uh, or turquoise that shines different uh, shade and different light we would manually adjust those levels mm. and then we would just export with the certain names so you know the hierarchy of the images mm -hmm. when how the way it should be uploaded by another person upload to drive google drive is picked up those images by hanam uh, the editor and uh, she makes sure it's perfect white background if she needs to make any logos add any information she does that with the preset uh, illustrator uh the template template uh -huh. yeah you just literally drop in the images you click you know control export and then it uh, selects all the artboards automatically and exports all the images with correct names into the folder mm -hmm. where the image processor or uploader or account manager for Amazon FBA does uh, open those folders and she just uploads onto the listing on Amazon and it's live and you're selling it's very streamlined streamlined yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, i was like i kind of learned a lot i remember i would still meet with my colleagues from work like mm. for beers or just if there's like a social they invite me because i've been working with them for quite a few years so mm. i was still kind of like part of the family yeah, they, you, uh, they, <coughs> they, they still trust you yeah you know? yeah so yeah so we would go out together and a few of my colleagues said kj you seen you know this amazon business like you see how it works right i said yeah, yeah, yeah it's like like how is it is it difficult to set up kind of run it because they my colleagues were uh, my business partners at that moment they had um, you know the sales people they mm -hmm. know how to get stuff from a to b uh, how to cut corners prices how to negotiate and that kind mm -hmm. of thing i'm not a business person i'm financially retarded <laughs> i like to say like don't fucking trust me with money it's Man, terrible not from the stuff that you post <laughs> on instagram you know because a lot of things that you post i don't understand yeah, so i'm financially <laughs> retarded I'm even more than you then yeah, you know so there's levels <laughs> to yeah because like you invest etc like uh, you know yeah but I'm, I'm learning it's a learning process and i think that's the most important thing you never know everything you can only try yeah. to go and progress but be curious yeah you know? always be curious that's the most important thing just you know if you don't think oh this is a boring thing well find an interesting angle about it and mm. see if you can you know find something yeah, about yeah. it so uh yeah i was kind of persuaded by my co former colleagues to you know like a chip in some money and mm. uh, just buy a small batch of products and upload them store this somewhere in some facility like a 3pl or uh, just upload them all into the fba mm. which is fulfilled by amazon so amazon does all the business you just run the account 
they they just, uh, they and you deliver products percentage yeah they take that, a yeah. Per, yeah percentage based on the weight size uh the area you set in the category of a product mm -hmm. uh and uh you know, many different factors mm -hmm. seasonality yeah. your score yeah it's so, crazy so, so you started this with yeah. your uh, like in previous 2000 job colleagues? 20 did i but it is 2019 beginning of 2019 and it took a while till we figured out how to get the products mm. over i got the same contact as uh, my employer was using uh, it happened to be like oh you're supplying you know this uh, company and this and this so yeah we're supplying retailers as well in, in uk mm. as the sainsbury's you know tesco it was like no shit I was like, okay, we're buying from you. <laughs> right. Send over a catalog, but few adjustments. It, it wasn't this like conflict of interest a bit? Because you were working for the company and then you're yeah, we, not directly, but you're kind of competing kinda with Kind of competing, them, right? yeah, yeah. So I kind of like, that's why I kept everything very quiet just for myself. And uh, I wasn't selling anything in, at the moment anyway. Mm. I was just trying to kind of like understand what's the best seller items. And they run and they sell tens of thousands, like, of different SKUs, it's crazy. It's so difficult to manage. Mm. You know, I've noticed many times containers would come in with items that are just broken, just very poor quality, and they sell them as like toys for kids or, you know, or party toys. And it's just, I open the bag sometimes to prepare for photo shoot, and I'm just like, this is trash. Mm. I, I just don't want to take a picture. Like I start becoming getting demotivated to take pictures. Like, mm. cause like I said, if a hobby becomes a job, Mm -hmm. it's not a hobby anymore and it's no fun anymore yeah, yeah. and uh, i started getting demotivated just by looking at all this trash i'm you know we're selling mm. and uh yeah i got asked a few times oh how we could improve this product because it always comes broken or you know this problem happens or we get many returns and as a designer engineer i'm like i used to deal with this stuff on a daily basis so, so yeah just change this to from polystyrene to polypropylene you know, and then ask them to send some samples. And I, I promise you, you, you won't be able to break plates or cups. It will be impossible. And the next thing you know, the products start coming in with better quality. You know, I check over through the design. I would tell them, yeah, go with this, don't go with that. Mm. You know, they kind of like started collaborating more on a different so level. So you started doing almost like business development. Yeah, in yeah, a way, in a way well. yeah. But whilst I'm already working there and then on the back of my mind, I already know this thing will sell and this thing won't sell because i already went through the development of of this and improving the product that's a really good seller and now mm. it's unbreakable mm. dude you know okay people probably won't return to buy again but can promote it as an unbreakable yeah. you know and the, even though people don't can buy it from me two times you know at least i'll attract more people because mm -hmm. they will buy a thing that has uh, you know comments and sections and good ratings saying oh you know this yeah. is amazing and it's not necessarily <coughs> people will understand uh the product at the level that you understand it yeah. but they're gonna like subconsciously feel the quality yeah the in any use way. of it just yeah. the way you use it you know will mm. and also you know by changing in you know, one type of plastic into another we kind of caught on into this uh all plastic uh uh, recyclability movement that's happening politically and uh, on many different levels in Europe. So France mm -hmm. was the first one to ban polystyrene and they, they were promising to do that in 2018. They said in two years, you're going to ban all the plastic shit, mm. you know, from food containers, utensils, all polystyrene and all shitty plastic gone. And everyone laughed. Nobody believed in that. It's, uh, mm. it's another promise, Paris climate agreement, blah, yeah, blah, yeah. blah. And then come February 2020, boom, they're fucking serious. All the products we had in France got pulled. They just, they just said, yeah, take it. You have like two weeks to grab them. Mm. You can't sell them anymore. So you have to ship all that stock back to UK, Germany, you know, other markets. Mm. And that was, it became a problem. But all the products that were best sellers that we already changed plastic into polypropylene, which is uh, mm. more food safe, it's non leaky, it uh, no, doesn't break that much, it is widely recyclable uh, plastic mm. at the curbside level or home, whatever. Mm. So, from that experience, I learned like, okay, this is, we focus on that kind of thing because it doesn't break, good quality, mm. uh, complies with the law, lower tax. 
if you can store it for a long mm. time in the warehouse. So it's, yeah. I, I talk with, spoke with my colleagues. I'm like, we're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, I'm not a business person. I don't like to take financial risks. And uh, but I was like, KJ, you're gonna either you're doing this or you're always gonna regret mm. that. At least that you didn't try. At least try something more, you know, yeah. different in your life than just you know being a you know office rat and just doing what others tell you to do. So I took the risk and uh, we started with a small batch of some like wine glasses, champagne glasses and those plates. And um, took us like quite a while to set everything right. We made lots of mistakes, probably lost a lot of money potentially uh, by doing those mistakes. But those are like uh, learning steps. And, uh, you know, like you in, in any business, you, yeah. you lose money in the beginning. Yeah. Anyway. yeah. And uh, we kind of like went from like 3000 pound investment to having you know one small a few boxes of things that we sold over a very kind of like long time we mm -hmm. weren't good at it and then we started looking for more products and bigger volumes because uh, the money we made we just put back in uh, and each time we were selling at like a 35 percent margin mm -hmm. so we you know kind of like one third of the money we added to the value you know by each time we ship products so we basically started increasing our earnings uh, bit by bit to the point where we could, you know, already stock 50,000 pounds worth of stock in the warehouse. And we started talking with 3PL company to do fulfillment for us. Uh, uh, so you could do fulfillment by Amazon and then you could have uh, copies of those listings mm -hmm. and different price level and different delivery dates. But they fulfill by us, the merchant at BM or a 3PL company, third party logistics. So we found a partner in Bristol called Hubu and we stocked some of our uh, stock, not in a warehouse where it sits and does nothing, mm -hmm. but some of our stock was in FBA, in Amazon warehouse, and another stock was in 3PL company. So any sales we make, uh, you know, could be fulfilled by Amazon, S sales that are not urgent, that doesn't need to be prime, for example, mm -hmm. delivery next day or same day evening you'll be sold by Hubu and fulfilled okay. by them. So we're kind of establishing the multiple channels. Then any extra uh, stock that we couldn't put in any of those places to sell, we store in dynamic warehousing. It costs us money, but you know, you need to keep supply somewhere. So we couldn't uh, order every three months from China and wait for delivery, shipment, production, and just, you know, it's just delays. We wanted to kind of like nail the seasonality. Mm -hmm. So we always have something to sell on big holidays, bank holidays, Easter, Christmases, Valentine's, that kind of thing. So we started like uh, planning ahead a year or two how we should be buying products. So we just start shipping bigger and bigger loads and keeping them in storage. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, we built up to the point, I think last year we shipped two containers in and the, we went from like having, you know, 3000 worth of, uh, pounds of stock to, uh, kind of like having, uh, 87,000 pounds worth of stock, just store storing in just two years. That's a lot. So man. that's a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, not the scale of the company that you work no, for. No, no, no. But because you, you don't work for them anymore, right? No, 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 no. So, yeah, uh, what happened? Uh, 2020 came, right? So that's when we started like getting the our Amazon thing with my partners to kind of like getting off the ground. And then I went. I remember on a holiday to Tenerife with my sister, her fiance at the time, and some friends. And uh, on a flight you could read the news before a flight and already see asian tourists with masks everywhere mm. and we're just getting ready kind of like okay you know the, is this serious no it's 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 thailand indonesia you know it's probably going to stay like there like it was in hong kong in 2010 with sars uh, sars cov one you know mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. the, that that virus so we thought it's going to be just another flu like happened before you know yeah. one week lockdown no school no work and then you're back to yeah, normal yeah, yeah. And then we spent 10 days, I think, in Tenerife, just enjoying the beach. I was playing pandemic game, you know, the, where you have to be a virus and you have to kill people. And uh, I find this uh, plague, plague Inc. That's yeah, horrible. Plague Inc. Amazing. 
you learn how the viruses work and i was playing i was getting really good at it i'm like winning every level with every mm-hmm. virus i was like this is amazing whilst people dying in the world by the way yeah in the real pandemic is happening and i'm playing in our game so <laughs> that, it's so that's, like a that's, confusing that, that's irony for yeah you. and we're like laying on a beach drinking our cocktails sunshine like no worries and then you read the news like the world is going crazy like mm. you know oh the lockdown's there lockdown's over there so I come back to london from holiday and in just a few weeks everything's changed and then uh, march comes uh, lockdown start in europe like seriously like italy milan closes oh, france yeah. everywhere italy, lithuania italy was horrible man yeah like, lithuania they mm. had a lockdown and uh, i was I remember going to the shop or driving to work in the morning because uh, I got a car to drive to outside London where the studio was. And I'm driving and the uh, roads empty in London. Like the mm. mo- main thoroughfares, empty, nothing. Mm. I was like, this looks like 23 days later. Like, it's, it's, it's crazy. Or 20 yeah, days later. 28, 28, 28 days, days later. later. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good movie, by the yeah, way. Yeah, and that's how London looked. I was just driving like, this is crazy. And my family would call me like, what are you doing? Are you cleaning? Where is your mask? Are you cleaning your hands? Why are you going to work? I was like, mm. someone needs to take photos of items we sell. Some people could go work from home mm. because all they do is, you know, a kind of like admin, managerial type of stuff that could be done from home from using laptop. laptop yeah. yeah. Mm. And I have to be physically in the studio because I need to receive samples that's still coming from China. Mm. And China, it's China virus, people say. And uh, I'm opening uh, boxes with deliverables. Yeah. I'm like, I, I imagine you I could a, get with ill a, with yeah. a hazard suit. Nobody would come in our things, studio. You know? <laughs> Nobody would come in our studio because yeah, people yeah. Were, like scared. We would wear uh, masks and with. Uh, in our office, people stay, keep distance, we fucking disinfect everything, spray everything, like, uh, yeah. The <laughs> but you, but you have to admit, that was fear, right? Like, like, like did you feel fear? I didn't, because my auntie, she's, uh, she works with pandemics, so she was oh, okay. she's just laughing. So, uh-huh. like, it will be just another thing, unless we start doing, taking precautions wrong, and it gets out of hand, and obviously people don't take things seriously yeah. sometimes. I so, guess she was wrong. Uh, yeah, yeah, but, like, none of us were ill. That's the thing. I never got it. Like, my dad never got it, and we travel Till now, all the really? time. Yeah, we never had it. We travel all the time. And the okay. pandemic, traveling was expensive, because you have to pay for tests every two weeks, mm. and it's, like, 100 euros yeah just like that and like i just want to see my family and you know that kind of thing so yeah kind of like i still was working the the lockdown so people not working you know on the sitting on the dole getting government money that type of thing i was still driving for two months Mm. until um, april came and easter came uh that was my last like shift Uh, i did the shoot many pictures sent to the editor who was working from home and you didn't know and, it was uh, last. Uh, it was probably last shots, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I was put on furlough after Easter. So furlough, you get paid. You know, maybe a little less, I think, was paid. Mm. But, yeah, and I that was went on for months. And that was, like, May, June, July, August. Like, good, amazing four months. Mm. Summer, I'm on a fucking holiday. I'm going sunbathing every day. I'm taking pictures every day. I'm editing. Mm. Like, I'm getting back into my groove. Yeah. And then uh, it was beginning of August, I think August 10th or 11th or something. And uh, Yuri, the guy who hired me, uh, calls me and says, KJ, I really hate to say, but we need to let you go because we can't no longer, we can't afford you any longer like the just you know it just makes no mm. financial sense you know business perspective but, but when you think on the other hand pandemic for e-commerce was actually a good thing for all it was companies amazing because people kept buying things from home yeah, yeah, online, yeah. so right? our amazon just fucking exploded literally the month before i was fired it was going full throttle mm. like it went from like making 200 pounds a month like nothing you know to doing like four grand six grand i'm like holy shit 
if you can actually this shit is working <laughs> you can make money but, from but this. I'm, i'm talking about the like the job that you lost because of pandemic oh yeah they were I, making I, I, quarter I of a million that, on each brand yeah I would, every th- month. I, I, i would think their sales if not increased they should probably stay the same because people yeah still kept shopping no yeah, yeah so yeah, i don't yeah. really understand why they had to let you go in a way i mean because you know? i wasn't any, taking any photos because okay. i couldn't go to the office obviously because oh, okay. you couldn't do and your the, job and then the lockdown the and the social distancing was still in place yeah. It's, uh, it's not that they couldn't afford no. you anymore probably yeah but other probably circumstances mm. and like i was like i was let go uh, they couldn't let go my friend in packaging because she she i think got pregnant mm-hmm. my team editors and rita uh, my assistant would come in and do some shots eventually when the it go, got eased out uh, the, the the restrictions And they eventually, my team got fired as well. And then they kind of mm-hmm. started sacking more and more people. The, the accountant got fired. So it kind of like shrunk quite a lot. And now, like before, on, when I go on Amazon, I look at my products and I would see their products because we direct competitors now. Mm. But I know I'm a small scale fish. They are massive. And our listings will be next to each other do they know uh, do they know now no, that, that i don't know you i don't do think that? so probably no so they maybe will know. maybe though no, maybe they will they know <laughs> probably yeah <laughs> if, if they, they watch the yeah <laughs> but anyway like and now i don't see them anymore uh-huh. like so either they change something or you know maybe there's a new photographer or they change the strategy or they're not selling uh, i don't know mm-hmm. but now i don't <laughs> see their listings anymore which is very weird because i used to see them all the time next to mine but you can still check if there's yeah i, I know the brand name so right? yeah, yeah, yeah of course i can you know I, but you know i would be i was surprised that like when i f- looked for my item you know there what comes next mm. because you kind of compete on the same area yeah and yeah. same categories and now it's just not there like mine mm. comes up you know i don't put my brand name or anything it just comes up mm. you know but there's not so you know something's changed probably you know the car probably would be explanation the result of them firing people And they mm. just can't continue on the same scale, probably. Yeah, to be that visible. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's yeah, hard so with probably, less people. Yeah, you know, so probably, you know, but good for me in Amazon was because I'm the photographer. I take my own pictures. Yeah. And I manage my own account. So yeah. I know what's going on. You it, know, so it, uh, it sounds like it was just meant to be because like you, like you said, you, you're a designer and engineer and then photographer, etc. Yeah. It's like We already all had, you know was leading yeah. to this kind of business because you know the product like yeah, you, know you can actually analyze the product yeah you can take good imagery of it you know how the amazon system works how to get the fulfillment yeah. etc how to streamline process i learned about exactly. the barcodes how yeah, to yeah. register them how to uh, define you know things how to make orders how to talk with suppliers the how this you know how the fuck the shipping works like You manufacture, you pack, you put in a container, mm. you order freight, you need to buy freight, you need to pay for container. It goes to the like Shang- Shanghai Yantian airport, mm. uh, the port, gets on a ship, swims across the world, you know, gets unloaded, sometimes stops somewhere or there are delays, it needs yeah, to be yeah. cleared. Sometimes you have a surprise check of the stock. You know, it takes weeks and weeks of, you know, planning. Yeah. So I learned all of these different things. And now it's, it's quite easy, just go on like uh, Amazon and I just made, I just sold four items. And uh, one's uh, champagne flutes and uh, margarita glasses to Italy. So three packs of margarita glasses goes to Italy. It's very close. Maybe you can deliver yourself. Yeah, <laughs> she, yeah it's always a pain in the ass. And one is sold. So the way we set up the system. So the first item, uh-huh. it has a normal skew. GS, just like glitter silver means. Uh-huh. And uh, that's fulfilled by Amazon. And the one that says FBM, the bottom one. Yeah. Yeah, that's fulfilled by Hubu, the 3 PL. Okay. So, so you know by the code. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I know who's fulfilling. And uh, uh, I know that the items will be going, you know, uh, from Amazon and 3 PL. So you just uh, made, uh, sold four items, two different sales through two different warehouses and mm. one is done you know both are done on amazon website mm. but one is not urgent so italy you know they're probably preparing for some sort of adventure uh, uh, party or something yeah, yeah. so they can wait and in england they want a prime so they paid more for the item it's going to be fulfilled by amazon 
So that's yeah. a good way of diversific- diversifying your stock and having the same stock in two different areas. Mm. But it's very interesting, like the way you describe it, it sounds so easy, but it's not that easy, you know? Yeah. Like now we, we have a lot of stress because yeah. we have a stock stuck in China and we don't have money to pay for to clear it. And uh, we just need like a couple grand now. So I was like, okay, we need to like just move all the stock we already have in UK to warehouse and like do these sales so we can generate cash to clear it because a bank doesn't want to extend our uh, credit. So I was like, okay, this is stressful time, but like I'm very bad with the money because I, when, when I was a student and growing up in London, like I always stressed about the money. Uh-huh. Now I don't let money dictate my feelings. And you know, if it's a shit situation, I'm like, well, it's shit situation. You know, yeah, what, what yeah. can I do? You know, so I you just always have to solve it. Yeah, you just to solve it. You have to figure it out and kind of like go with the pun- roll with the punches. So mm-hmm. and you kind of learn these things. So now I'm kind of like, yeah, we discuss with my business partner. There's only two of us left, so two people running a company. And uh, now we just discuss possible options, what ways we could figure this out. You know, mm-hmm. we could put our money. But I said no. Let's you know just use the company money, make smart decisions, and t- buy the bullet. And do this now because we have a May, June, summer period coming. Many holidays. There's Prince uh, coronation, uh, to King King's coronation. When is that? Uh, That's May. May, yeah. Yeah, so it's going to be a big public holiday. Probably going to be like uh, Queen's birthday was, three-day holiday, I hope. So I'll fly to London for that. Mm. And uh, yeah, we're expecting you know, good sales, but we have lots of stocks stuck in China. It's a huge container mm. worth, I don't know, loads, loads. It's the biggest order we ever made. Yeah. The <coughs> advice that I can give you that I learned from the other podcast guest, grandmas. They have money. Man, just borrow, <laughs> just borrow a few grand from the grandma or yeah. you know some family member because most of the time they're will- willing to help, especially if they know that yeah. you're, you're not like borrowing and never giving that back. No, like, no, it's no, just no, no. Yeah. That it's the just situation. It takes like one thing from A to B, exactly. and you'll have the yeah, money yeah, to give yeah, back. Yeah, That's yeah. all. And, and they need. can even get dividends. Like you can agree, yeah. you know, on percentage. Say, you know? Yeah, points. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but, so uh, yeah, you learn like these different things and you stop stressing yeah. about different problems. I remember uh, someone, it's a joke, or maybe I heard somewhere someone told me, it's like if you owe a bank 500 pounds, it's your problem. Hmm. If you owe a bank 500,000 pounds, it's a bank's problem. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, yeah. so you kind of start making <laughs> different business decisions when you know like, okay, we need to take more risks mm. or we need to buy into the stock for the future. And then you kind of, you pay back all of that very quickly because all that money will make in two weeks, you know, on the May sales, on the speed yeah. that was sales happening in, in England. You know, now we had like very dry few mm. months. It was like six months uh, and now it's picking up back again because you kind of need to manage the business, you know, pay attention. And uh, obviously, because I lost the job, it was a very stressful time. Uh, I had a chance to spend more time on Amazon and kind of develop into the point where it was like rolling very quickly. And we just like every day, we're just like posting on our WhatsApp group. So you go, oh, look at that. You just refresh. Every day, we just like try to sit and refresh. Like, oh, just made a sale. And you just refresh every 15 minutes, see how much mm. money you made. <laughs> D- this kind of business, do you, do you actually have to advertise and promote it somehow? Yeah. So, <laughs> but like lo- locally on Amazon, I guess, right? Yeah. A- Amazon you obviously use Amazon does, ads. does like banners, etc. Yeah. On the so websites, you do Amazon right? ads. So uh-huh. you make betting on the keywords. For example, if you search uh, party cups, that's just for example, right? Red party cups. Mm-hmm. So all the people who sell red party cups who have Amazon Prime ads service, they will bet on that exact chain of words mm-hmm. or phrase or different words and you bet per click like to be uh, to appear on search oh, results yeah. that will cost you 40p for example yeah. so if someone searches you appear in search results that was 40p and now you have a high chance of making a sale so you compete on the clicks basically okay some mm-hmm. products like we would make bigger risks we would say okay i can spend 60p per click and uh, it's a bigger chance going to make a sale. And we notice mm. uh, that we create traffic sometimes and you're not making sales. Then I turn off all the advertisements 
So we're not appearing. But because we're already making traffic over the previous weeks, you don't need to advertise anymore because you're already in a priority results because okay. you're so popular. Even if you're you don't ranking make, higher. You're ranking mm-hmm. higher just mm-hmm. by a number of visits and traffic you generate. And then I started noticing, like, oh, sales happen. Ads are shut off. Like There is no advertising, but sales are happening. Hmm. So we kind of like start learning these different things, how to manage stuff. Yeah. So yeah, and then I remember my boss from old job from Braveform, and now he was acquired by a different company that used to be our clients, not clients, but like uh, licensees, uh, kind of co-partners. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're based in Turkey, in Istanbul. Uh, I've been there before with them, uh, worked with them, it's a great company, and uh, we've been acquired. Pre- my previous job was acquired by them. So I got received a call literally two days before I got fired uh, from uh, Graham. And he said, like, we need your help. We need, like, a designer based in the UK or Europe who, can, who knows the files, the designs, the access. Uh, you know, worked on projects in the past mm-hmm. with the clients because, uh, you know, we're we doing loads of development. We're moving into, like, polypropylene plastics. So that's what I've done with Amazon. Yeah. And now whole fashion industry is doing the same thing. So I said, okay, let's discuss, you know, th- uh, you know days, what kind of basis I'm working on. Is it remote office and stuff like that? I said, no, it's going to be remote, 100%. You know, we, I don't want to do office, you know. So that's how it started. I got hired back in again. And the uh, pandemic was kind of like a, uh, like a bless, uh, what do you call it? Uh, bless, uh, bless in disguise, right? Yeah. So I got to fly home for Christmas. My dad got stuck in Norway. Uh, I started working from home. So I could afford to be at home, save some money, uh, kind of go my f- feet on the ground, back on again, less stressful times. And then the big lockdown in winter happened in 2021, mm. I think, yeah. 2020, 21. Uh, and uh, everyone got like stuck. My mom got COVID, my sister got COVID, her, her fiance got COVID, my dad was stuck in Norway. I'm flying, uh, I'm quarantining with my mom, and she gets COVID whilst I'm there. So I'm thinking, oh, fuck, I'm going to get it now. And you still don't get it. And I still don't get it. I never had it. And I interact with the people who patient, always have COVID. Maybe you're the patient zero, man. Like, they, <laughs> they should look into you. Yeah, me and my dad and a few other of my friends. Because I thought that just because we always hang out outside, I go to the pub all the time. Mm. You meet with people. Even during yeah. the pandemic, when you couldn't be inside the pubs, you could stand outside and you could take takeaway mm. beer. And people just go to the parks. And but they're still close to each other, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And nothing happened. You know, all of us were clear. Like none of us had COVID. Just tell everyone what you're taking, man. Yeah, like beer. What pills? Beer. Uh, just beer? <laughs> just, just beer. beer. <laughs> yeah, and be around people, obviously. You know, even if you don't interact, just be active, you know, go out and mm. all, all that kind of thing. So that kind of like <clears throat> gave me permission when I got the job to work from home remotely, mm. uh, to gave me a chance to spend time more with family. So I wouldn't fly just for Christmas for two mm-hmm. weeks in and out. I would fly for like a November, December, January, February. I would spend two, three months at home, fly back to London because I like the city. I love living over there. And then you probably go somewhere else. That's when the, we started talking, just lockdowns finished. Friends from Lithuania who moved back to Lithuania started coming over to England again yeah. for holidays, for short trips. Mm. I'm meeting more and more people who were like more into remote work. And uh, that's when I started talking with you online saying, oh, I should go either Portugal try, or try Malta. Malta. And you said, yeah, you know, have you ever been here? I was like, no, but my friends have been uh, years ago and, you know, they had a positive experience. They went for holidays, obviously, but I want to mm. go, you know, for longer term three months in the beginning because uh, uh, all that working environment kind of allows me to do that. So yeah. I'm very fortunate to yeah. have that. And you should use it, obviously, when you have an option to yeah. be anywhere and work. Because yeah. I spoke it's, with it's my great. boss and I was like, are we, you know, going to the office type of thing? It was like, mm. fuck no. <laughs> it was like, I'm never going back to the office. And that's a boss. Yeah. And we, I remember have a meeting with the, our Turkish owner flying in. Uh, for a dinner so everyone who works in London and in the UK met up for dinner and I uh, said you know some people like working in the office like uh, our Polish uh, colleagues uh, Swedish 
they just love office. Like they're mm. always in the office, never work from home ever. So they will drive to work just to work from the, uh, just to yeah. be in the office. And I said, I see you are very productive working from home. It, like all you and your colleagues are very good. Obviously, if you if you demand, if you ask, I'll rent an office for you. It's, it's no problem. You know, I'll rent office next to your home if you want. Mm. And I was like, oh, thank you, Gokhan, but that's not necessary. <laughs> you know, you know the. It, it, but some people work yeah. better in that it's, environment. It's just some people. Yeah, I was gonna say like, some are more productive from a home environment. Um, I, I personally, I'm like a mixed, mixed bag, really. I'm 50, 50. Yeah. Too. It, it, de it depends. Like if you, if you actually manage to focus properly, then anywhere is fine. But, um, I feel like office environment just helps to focus a bit more. Depends also on what you do. Well, the nature you of your know, work. Like if I need three monitors, I cannot work from cafe, you know, mm. or, or, or co working let's say because yeah. they might not have the setup etc you know it, it gets a bit more complicated but i feel like a lot of digital uh, professions you know where you just use your laptop yeah you can work from from anywhere really and uh, a lot of people love that flexibility yeah. and and that's and i i love that pandemic actually showed it to the world that yeah it's possible to work remotely you know yeah yeah Sure, because <clears throat> I worked in the office. It was kind of open, just one company space, mm. but it's open plan office. And uh, it's, it's great because you can manage quickly with the other teams, but it's kind of hard to focus sometimes. Then we moved to co-working space in White City in West London. And uh, it was uh, with other companies, as I mentioned before, and uh, many great networking events every week. Uh, lots of fun, open bar, which is always amazing. If you want to have a beer for lunch, you don't have to go to the pub. You can have it in the office, mate. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Exactly. Co good coffee, nice people from all around the world. I mean, I'm talking from, from Sydney to Tokyo, you know, Texas, California, you know, uh, New York, uh, obviously all over Europe. That's, uh, the, that's from the perks Africa of, of and Asia, yeah. yeah. You meet the really interesting yeah. people, I'm and, an, and then sometimes even like you get actually business from yeah. from the people that are in that same space with you. Yeah, yeah, they might know? have unrelated business thing going on, but they have something that intersects uh, with your uh, company's uh, things. For example, mm -hmm. was a recycling business that pulls recy uh, broken down plastic from waterways. I was mm -hmm. like, this is fucking brilliant. This is what mm -hmm. we're dealing with. We make plastic products. We need to advertise more sustainable ways of doing it. We mm -hmm. need to talk with these guys because they know how the plastic breaks down. Yeah. So, you know, we learned a lot of knowledge just by being in co-working space with other people, you know, using 3D services to 3D print uh, our samples, you know, was very handy mm -hmm. because when you move from your own office, to co-working, you start to outsource more. So you kind of create, inadvertently, you create more jobs that are like outsource jobs. Yeah. So uh, more, speci more specific needs are required. So people who focus on one area of, uh, of type of pro pro professional practice. So that kind of creates a new economy hmm. when you're co-working. And then uh, obviously the remote thing happened and um, yeah, I think I would miss co-working and remote mix. I mm. would like it. Like back in the office, even open plan office, big no. No, 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 no. Yeah, like, like you said, sometimes hard to focus. There's, there's yeah. other issues, you know. Also, I'm an engineer, so I just, I just need myself, mm. you know. But uh, you need the social uh, element as well. That's why a co-working space is great. Yeah. And then also you, you want to be part of a conversation of the cur current, you know, zeitgeist that's happening. Mm. And if you're always sitting at home, you just see everything on the news. You know, you read, oh, yeah. that, that's cool. It'd be very cool to discuss with someone. Who? There's no one. You in your kitchen, yeah. mate. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, and I had that experience. I worked in a startup, Lithuanian startup, um, and I never met my colleagues. Really? In, like I, I worked over a year there. And I only had video calls and it's like, it's, it's nice because the world is that flexible these days. But like, on the other hand, I, w I wish I met them. Yeah. You person. want to interact with them. Yeah. And I had, I, I almost did. I had, um, 
a holiday back in Lithuania and I was like trying to arrange, you know, mm -hmm. to meet them. But the baby was six months at the time. It was a bit hard to, you know, go long distances like with the baby chair, etc. And I had to kind of cancel on those plans. Uh, but obviously it would it would have been so so nice to meet them and uh, i hope I'll, i'm gonna still meet them because i'm still in touch with a few you know mm. but um just as as an example and it's not just me there's a lot of people people probably that actually work yeah. in the company I know and, and finished colleagues. working there and never met their colleagues in person yeah you know? yeah yeah i got friends who work like that who are like traveling now vietnam thailand morocco and you know, yeah. I don't know how they work remotely, but across that so many so many timelines. But it depends on your worker nature, the deliverables mm. you need to produce. So I remember when I moved to here to Malta, I spoke with my boss and he said, Where are you now, KJ? It was like Malta. I was like, Oh, you know, you're gonna be back in London anytime soon. I was like, No, I was expecting to kind of uh, change the environment for a bit for kind of longer term. I'm not entirely sure it's legal to be honest, because you know, I'm kinda of like I'm paying taxes in UK, so I'm paying crazy fucking tax, 40-45%. Mm. So, and I'm not using any of their services right now. Yeah. So it's kind of like stupid, but at the same time, I'm kind of like investing in case something happens, they can always go back to England. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and you've been investing <clears throat> for so many years, like there's already pension, etc. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, there's, there's a long record of you being there. Yeah, so yeah. for you now to change to, let's say, a service provider contract instead of job uh, contract. Yeah. And just to start paying taxes here. Uh, you know, it It'd would be, be big rigmarole. It it would be complicated because I did that w with that company that uh, I never mm -hmm. met my colleagues in person. You know, I did that. Um, so you pay your own taxes. So basically, you're a freelancer who got a big client. Yeah, you yeah. Know, yeah. In a way, and um, I don't know. For some people, it works. For me, it worked for for that period of time. But uh, I think when you have a you know a job contract, it's it's much easier because the company does majority things for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but obviously, based on the situation, whatever yeah. works, really. Yeah, I had a freelance thing going on for a few months, and it was making me good money. But obviously, you can do it for as so so long until it starts to bother you, and you have to manage yeah. too much, and then you're like, just okay, I just want to focus on life rather than just work because yeah. it, it gets too much like i was always just working mm. and it kind of changed over the last few years when i was like oh i can spend more time with family i can separate myself from work then i came here to malta and i got to do that a bit more so it's good weather uh look you know people complain it's snowing or raining back home look it's 20 fucking degrees mate mm. it's amazing yeah you yeah. know you can go and enjoy sunshine i got a little tan yesterday just by walking outside that's true man. and you know that's work-life balance uh, kind of sorted out and i'm very fortunate i get to have that you know yeah. from all the hard work in university studies the the office jobs and the, i got to travel when we're working in a previous company as well i worked in, in new york istanbul germany uh quite a few times it's, and uh, yeah it's it's all the hard work paying off right now, yeah and know? now i can kind of like relax and uh, i always kind of laugh when my uh, girlfriend or her friends or people around you quite young and they all have this drama running in their lives and then you know, all stress I'm like you have no idea what stress is you yeah. know like this or is what's nothing. coming yeah yeah this if you is think nothing. this is stress wait until yeah. something else happens yeah now you, know? you need to kind of like you young you have energy do it now you like focus now get mm. all that crap out of the way now you know mm. far far parties all that kind of crap it happens every day nobody cares i don't remember a single one of them i don't mm. care oh i remember spending good time with friends family traveling going places and enjoying myself yeah. having fun you know I, I remember more days taking photos than days when i went to party you know course, i don't remember what course. happened who went or stuff like that subconsciously it brought you more joy yeah 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 for sure you yeah know, i enjoy in, those in, moments in the long run. way more so i was like and now i want to like have these moments and make memories here and kind of like take it more uh, seriously about you know my personal life yeah. so i think that's what the, the remote work kind of uh, all that progress from being locked uh, as a you know computer rat mm. you know 
brought me here where I just can move freely. Yeah. And that's yeah, I feel very I, fortunate. I really I really there. hope that Malta got you for good. No, for, it's for, not for, forever. For, no, no, no. No, it's not for, it's not forever, but uh, I I hope that it's it's going to be a place that you will either I'll remember keep, keep, keep keep coming back, you know, because yeah. because you like the place, hopefully. Um and it just gives you something good in life, man. Like yeah, it's, yeah. it's good experience. Yeah, you know? how the speed speed of life is slower than in London or other other big cities. Mm. Uh, but it's a uh, good uh, amount of young people around who mm. came uh, to work to study, and uh, it's very young. It feels young. Con- country feels young and going and advancing and moving very yeah. fast yeah. to the right direction. You know. You know, people might hate the development going on around here, but it's getting, you know, probably for the better now than for the worse. Yeah, I, I hope so. And uh, to be honest, Malta is, you know, it's the place where you can f- go to a place and feel super urban, you know, that yeah. that, that is super uh, urban in, in, in like architecture and, and how everything's, you know, working. And then you just drive for ten minutes, and you meet goats in fields. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so it's very that, quick to go yeah, around. If, if yeah. you if you want to to run away, obviously, if you really want to run away, go to Gozo. Um, yeah, that's that's how Malta people say. That's how Malta used to be, like ten, fifteen years ago. Mm. You know, they they now just started de- like the development, the construction started there um, to to kind of pick up. But there's still a lot of um, this old Malta feeling. Yeah. So uh, like Marsa with, with Scala, south of mm. uh, Main Island, right? It's still small uh, buildings. You go hotels, but yeah. now they signed, they go approved to do building whatever. Now it's free for yeah, 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 everything. Yeah, but I mean, Marsa Scala, it's, um, it's south. So it's more, I don't know. Is more local I, I, population. I, there? I talked, yeah, I talked to to a few Maltese, and they say people from south they're very different from northern part of the island, mm. you know, but uh, not necessarily in the bad way. Just th- they're just different. But um, that's that's I pers- what I personally like about Malta is that um, it's 10, 15 minutes drive, and you're like in a different time. In the yeah, same country, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's fun, and for people, who, especially who love um, history, it's insane. Like the stuff you that you can yeah. see from Neolithic era, 10, yeah, like years ago. Th- there's actually yeah. an oldest temple, I think, in the world in Malta. You know, like it's it, it even predates the like the stone Stonehenge, like the yeah. that that thing. It's uh, I'm I'm afraid to make a mistake, but I think it's like three thousand years BC. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like super super old. Yeah, yeah. So um, the, I was in a museum in uh, Medina and uh, in Gozo, mm-hmm. the, the church. Uh, yeah, it was, you got Neolithic caves and stuff. Yeah, yeah. There's there's so much stuff to see. Yeah, yeah in yeah. Rabat you got yeah. catacombs. That's where I want to go next. Kind of just to make a little visit. I know it might not be like French type of stuff, but they, at mm. least they're very, very old. I'd like to see how they look like. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, it's a lot of things going on around here. So Cool, man. Yeah, I hope I hope Malta catches and doesn't let you go easily, you know? Yeah, I should be here for another few months at least. Then I'll see where I'm going. Yeah. I want to go to Spain or Portugal. But but I, but I have a feeling that you'll come back to Malta at some point. Yeah, 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 I'll do come. Yeah, I will come back. Cuz mm. even my friends from like who've been here were visited for mm. uh, Erasmus exchange uh, program or just uh, as a holiday, you know, they messaged me yesterday, like, "Oh yeah, I'm coming," you know. Mm. <laughs> so, <laughs> people think about us, "Oh, you're there." I was like, "Yeah, yeah. I, I think I'm going to come." There's yeah. th- there's always like if you live here, there's always someone who just randomly uh, came up with the idea to come to Malta yeah, for, yeah. for a week, you know, for a holiday. So yeah. you, like I met you, my you, friend from London who is now living in Lithuania in airport on the way here. Oh, nice. I was like hearing someone kind of half drunk, mm. head over this. <laughs> uh, he was like, yeah, I'm going flying to Malta. I'm just from a party. I haven't slept. Oh my God, I'm so drunk. I was like, hey, what are you doing here? I was like, What? Like you, where are you going? Malta. Me too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's go. That's <laughs> so, nice. That's let's nice. have a beer. Okay. So yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, you meet people here. 
Cool, man. Thanks for uh, for coming. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Time. Amazing. Because we said we're gonna do the second part. Yeah, and yeah, we yeah. Did. You gotta do it. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Thanks for listening. <laughs> cool. If you're still listening, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I think I think we did like over two hours, so it's it's that's cool. crazy. It's cool. I don't it's know cool. how it's, the time flies. Holy okay. shit. Okay. Go.